Heidi ho my peeps. I've had a really bad couple of days. Last night was tough. As you can see, I'm in a hotel room. I'm with Leanne. Um, she came a day early. Um, however, it's been a really rough night. Um, she had a, a little anxiety, well, rather large anxiety attack um, about, you know, the long drive and being away from her family and all that. She did a live stream about it, and so did I. Um, and then, you know, we woke up a little while ago. It's uh, one. It's one thirty in the morning right now, but we woke up and talked for an hour and a half or so. And I spilled the beans about all the things that have been bothering me, and she spilled the beans about things that were bothering her. And you know, that was good, but um, it's left me really exhausted. So my eyes are red. My shirt's all wet because I was crying and using it as a handkerchief. <laughs> so anyway, I just a few minutes ago, I told her, hey, listen, I hate to tell you this, but I need to do a masking video that's due at 11 o'clock this morning. <laughs> so she graciously said that's okay. Anyhow, um, so let's get to the masking video. It's so funny. It's, you know, I'm, uh, I've got this pre-scheduled -pre thing that I normally do without any trouble. And now it's like in this new environment with all these weird emotions that I'm dealing with and blah, blah, blah. So um, I, I am very glad to be doing this particular video tonight. And the reason is because last week, Cynthia did her video, uh, her um, uh, masking video. And then her topic that she wanted to talk about was 1975. Now, those of you who have been following me for a while know how important that year is to me. Um, I, I've wanted to go back there ever since my mom passed away. And um, I'm beginning to understand why. I mean, there are reasons. Um, one of the biggest reasons is I was 15 in 1975. And that was the, there was a period there somewhere in the summer for about 15 minutes one afternoon when I was beautiful. I was at the peak of my beauty. Ever since that 15 minutes was over, it has been downhill ever since. <laughs> so I remember 1975 as being the highlight of my physical beauty. Um, but there were so many other beautiful things about 1975 that I'm going to talk to you about. But first, I want to show you the um, the mask I'm using today, tonight. It's called the Elasticity Gold Pack. And it says, Strengthening Elasticity, Recharge Energy, Skin Improvement. Leaders something or another dermatologist tested okay here's the part i love the most about this one though so on the back you take a look at it and it says solution step one step two how to use and then other and made in korea but how to use is in korean i mean the how to use is in english but but the explanation's in Korean. Solution, step one, it's all in Korean. So all I know is that there's something important I'm supposed to know about here on the back of this thing, and I have no idea what it is. So I'm not even sure how you're supposed to use this. So I'm guessing, like every other mask, you just slap it on your face and wait till it feels like it's dried and, you know, wash it off. Leave it on for 10 or 15 minutes. That's what I'm guessing. So that's what we're gonna, what we're gonna do. So I took the top off and now, I'm going to put it in my hand here. Oh, it is gold. Look at that. I don't know if I've ever used this before. If I have, it's been so long ago. Okay. So we're just going to slap this on. I don't have any, I didn't bring my masking uh, application brush, and I'm sorry I didn't because, boy, that is, that's the way to, to put a mask on is with that that brush that thing really works oh i love how iridescent this is just an iridescent gold it's just beautiful um i brought my other gold mask too the one that's um that it dries and then you peel it off i figured if the girls feel like masking tomorrow night we've got that as a choice um i don't know how much of the stuff you're supposed to use i'm guessing a thin layer that makes sense to me 
get it as far up under my eyes as I feel comfortable. There we go. Do the hairline, all right. Down on the, the neck waddles a little bit. There we go. Um, it feels like there's enough in here to do one more mask, so. All right. So, let's talk about 1975. The 70s were a wonderful and a scary time to be a teenager. They were wonderful because you could get away with murder. I mean, you know, if the cops stopped you because you had you know, alcohol in your car, they'd scare you and they'd make you pour it out and they'd tell you if they see you on the street, they're going to call your parents and lock you up. And of course, you knew they were looking for your car, so you went on home like you were supposed to. Um, or at least we did. And um, it was, if you messed up, you had opportunities to um, to redeem yourself. It wasn't like now. When kids mess up now, all it takes is once, one time, and it's going to follow them for the rest of their lives. So, so it was nice to live in a time when you a window where you could make mistakes and still, you know, live to live to see another day basically um i loved the hair and the makeup and the clothes from the 70s i know a lot of people make fun of clothes from the 70s and when i look at a lot of the pictures and movies of clothes from the 70s i'm like okay i remember that stuff but that's not what i wore you know i didn't wore, wear plaid pants and a white shirt and a knit vest i didn't wear that what I would wear would be super tight bell-bottom blue jeans and a tight little t-shirt with cap sleeves and it was always a v-neck and I had all this you know boobage coming out the top and I always had a cute little you know embroidered thing um, collar or I would wear like a work shirt and cords or I would wear a cute little top Okay, I'm back. I'm sorry about all that artifact on the um, the pre previous clip and all the jumping around. I was, I've never had trouble recording with QuickTime before on my laptop, but man, is it giving me trouble tonight. Um, but I'm going to grind through and try to get this video done for you guys. Um, so let's go back to clothes. Um, Big Mac overalls with a tiny little top, tight, like like a tube top. I wore a lot of tube tops back then, believe it or not. Um, and the other thing I wore a lot of was vintage. Now, very few people were into vintage back in the 70s, but we had a marvelous little vintage clothing store in town. Um, the woman who ran it is still running a clothing store. It's a different one, but... Um, you know, she's, she, she sells rockabilly clothes now, but when she was a young woman, she sold vintage. I mean, 1930s slips that you wore as a dress, big crinoline petticoats. Um, I, I bought a lot of little tops and sweaters from the 1930s that I would wear. Um, I had a very unique take on fashion when I was a, a young girl. Um, and so I, I loved, there was a style back then that was sort of akin to what you would call boho now. Um, it had a lot of like big Victorian sleeves and, you know, a lot of it was made out of rayon. So it had a nice, nice drape to it. It had a very vintage kind of look, lots of lace and stuff. There was a company called Gunny Sack. And I, I don't know if Gunny Sack, Sacks, Gunny Sacks. I don't know if Gunny Sacks is still in business. I don't think so. Anyhow, they were famous for the prairie dress, and it was always a. I can see artifact again. I hope I hope we get through this. Anyhow, it would always have a puff sleeve, usually a square neck, lots of lace. It was an empire bodice, and then a long um, skirt that went to the floor with a big deep flounce, um, in calico colors, lots of lace, lots of ribbon. Um, Okay, so obviously I'm having trouble, and so this is going to be done in little clips. It's going to cut off. Um, anyhow, so about the, the gunny sacks dresses, it's everybody wanted a gunny sacks dress for their prom, you know, that was real popular. 
Another brand that was popular was called Foxy Lady, and Foxy Lady was um, out of San Francisco, and I had a friend, an acquaintance really, her name was Robin, and her sister worked for Foxy Lady. She did marketing or something for the company, and they did very um, kind of hippie, that sort of hippie boho thing that you saw in the 70s, a lot of uh, Victorian touches to it, very sexy, beautiful dresses and, you know, skirts and shirt outfits and stuff, and Robin, um, was the most beautiful girl in our class. This girl had the most gorgeous bone structure I have ever seen on anyone. Um, she wasn't super tall, so she, so to do actual modeling, she was not big enough. She was maybe my height or a little bit taller. She might have been 5'4", something like that. I mean, 5'5", five, five, might have been 5'6". I don't think she was that tall. But she was breathtakingly pretty, just like Grace Kelly pretty. Um, Anyhow, so she would do modeling for this company, for her sister, and she always had, you know, the latest whatever was coming off the assembly line. She'd always have a copy of something, and she'd wear it to, you know, dance. Here we go again. Dances or whatever. <laughs> so, um, you know, I the... The beauty of clothes back then I really loved. Um, there was a jewelry company back then called 1928 Jewelry, and I loved their stuff. It was, again, real vintage, Victorian, early 20th century looking pieces. Um, it was just a costume, but, you know, you could get it at Macy's or Weinstock's or Gottschalk's or any of those, you know, department stores. So I really like to have that. I still have pieces from my my um, my teenage years that I saved all these all these years. Um, I also have my vintage clothes or some of them um, from my teenage years. I, I don't throw anything away. I packed away that stuff. Anyhow, and then um, the makeup was a lot of really greasy lip gloss, bright you know iridescent pink. Um, we did purple or blue or green sometimes the natural, more natural look on your eyes. I like to wear purple. Um, no eyeliner back then, no false lashes, but we wore a lot of mascara, a lot of blush. I don't remember ever wearing foundation um, or, you know, none of the stuff we do today. Um, the, um, the company Bonnie Bell made a lot of um, the makeup that we wore. It was a makeup company that was you know, directed to teenagers. They did have this bronzing stuff that was cool. It was a liquid. And so you, you know, you put it on your fingers and just kind of put it where you wanted it. It was a way different bronzer than we have today. And um, I loved Bonnie Bell products. Um, I remember we wore a lot of Maybelline back then too. Um, I wasn't too into, you know, the more middle end um, stuff, but then most of us weren't. You, we didn't have the choices back then that you have now. Um, I don't remember skincare being a big deal, except for that we all used 1006 lotion. I don't know if they even make it anymore, but it was the stuff. It was like an astringent lotion, and you would put it on your face, and it was supposed to help your your zits along with the clear seal that you dabbed on, right? Uh, I don't know what it did. It probably just dried you out, whatever. But I loved the smell of 1006 lotion. Um, we would also use Noxzema, um, the the mentholated Noxzema, um, to take off makeup and stuff. So. You know, that's what the makeup deal was. You always felt, yeah, you felt pretty. I mean, you didn't feel like you were wearing a mask like a lot of people look today. You know, there's 14 steps now to do your face where it used to be five. All right, hair. The hair was cool. Um, they don't get it right in movies ever, but I remember feathered hair. And there was a special way that, you, that they would cut your hair where they'd part it here and pull it up and cut it. And then when it fell down, it would fall in this wave that, that would come back from your head. And you would take a big round brush and blow it back and it would just make this wave. And then you'd spray the crap out of it with Aquanet so it wouldn't move around. <laughs> and then the rest of your hair was usually layered. So if you were lucky like I was and had curly hair, you didn't have to do anything to the rest of it. Just had to do those feathered bangs and you were done. Um, then uh, long about 1975 or six, I think it was 1975, I think, 
um, came Dorothy Hamill and the Dorothy Hamill haircut, which was a wedge cut. It was a short wedge cut, so it was like a bowl cut, only in the back they wedged it up higher. And it was an adorable haircut that looked good on almost everybody. Um, but when we when the 70s started, there was this haircut called the shag. Um, I was probably 1971 or two when I first had a shag done because I hadn't reached high school yet. I think I was still in junior high. And so I went to this real popular kind of high, high end place to get your hair done in the mall. And <laughs> the guy that everybody used, his name was Eddie. Um, I got an appointment with Eddie and it was like 60 bucks, which was a huge amount of money back then. And all Eddie did to cut my hair is he took the whole thing, he pulled it all forward, brushed it all forward, grabbed it, had a razor, and he just went zip, 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 zip. He says, okay, throw your head back. I did. And it was done, a perfect shag. And a shag was a short layered haircut. You know, you had bangs and then it was layered down to about here and the bottom was a little bit jagged. Um, but boy, shags were so popular for a while there. But the funny part was how was how they did it. I mean, he made so much money on those dang haircuts that took him, you know, what? 45 seconds to do, literally. Zip, 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 throw your head back. It was it it was that simple. So I went through my shag, then I went through my feathered, long layered kind of um uh Farrah Fawcett sort of sort of time um also girls wore their hair a lot like they do now as well parted in the center long straight that was that was real popular um the 80s is when you started having like big hair we didn't have big hair. Our hair was flat, usually flat on the top. You didn't, you know, you didn't tease it to make it high. Um, there's a little I'm grinding my way through this video. Okay, so we didn't tease our hair to make it high, um, but it was pretty and flowing and natural. Um, we used a lot of sun in, you know, to to make um, to make highlights. Um, some girls would get their highlights done, you know, they'd pull it through a cap and get high, hair, their highlights done, but that wasn't popular really yet. That didn't really get popular until the 80s. So we would use lemon juice or sun in. Um, some people would use a henna mask on their hair. Um, but most, most hair was pretty much natural. Um, okay, so shoes. The shoes in the 1970s were wonderful. First of all, they were made with actual leather. Now, trying to find leather shoes now that are, you know, popular, trendy, are very hard. Most popular, trendy shoes are made out of pleather or vinyl or something that lasts for one season. Um, so, but everything was made of leather back then. There, there almost were no vinyl shoes. Um, and I remember a lot of wedgies, like wooden or or cork wedges. Um, I remember the um, um, the pla the wooden platform. The company Bear Traps was very well known for their wooden platform shoes, and they made them low. Um, in fact, um, I have a pair. Um, they aren't bear traps, but they're the very same style as a pair that I had when I was in high school. I found them online in my size, so I bought them. And anyway, um, they, they weren't from bear traps, but they were the same style. I should insert a picture. If I can find a picture, I will insert one. Anyway, so that, and then they had real high, high heels and a big high platform and then leather that would go across and then around your ankle. Um, I had several pairs of those. Then there was Famillari. The Famillari shoe had the bottom that was like a roller coaster sort of bottom, and they were made of an EVA plastic, you know, um, uh, molded plastic with this weird bottom. And then they, they made them in regular shoes. They also made them in several different heights of a sandal. And I had every kind of shoe family made. I loved that style. My mother wore it and my sister wore it. So it was kind of cool. We were all wearing the same shoes. <laughs> um, different sizes, same same style. Um, those shoes were popular. Another thing that was popular was to wear running shoes to school, like Adidas. Um, my very favorite pair of running shoes, though, was the Nike Cortez. 
and it came in two different styles. Um, one was a leather, um, with, and then the other one was a nylon with a leather, kind of a, a suede split leather toe. Um, those were the ones that I loved. They fit my feet perfectly. They were cushiony and they came in dark blue, which was the color that I had. They had the white swoosh and then they had um, just the way the toe box was made was really neat. I just loved these shoes and I went through several pair of those by the time high school was over and um, I stopped buying them and you know, they still make the Nike Cortez, but it isn't the same shoe. It's not the same style. Very similar, real similar, but not the same thing, especially around the toe box and the front of the sole. So anyhow, um, I loved those. Um, Birkenstocks were around then. I had my pairs of Birkenstocks, a couple pairs through high school. Um, Another thing I loved were my Fry boots. Uh, Fry made a boot, still makes it, called the Campus. That's the styling. And they have a different, several different kinds that are in the styling. The one I had zipped up the inside. Now, that was a, they didn't make that one for very long. Most of them were just pull-ons. So I had the Campus boot in what the color called, it was called Banana, which was a, a really light, almost yellowish tan. Um, but mine weren't pull-ons, mine zipped up the inside. Um, I have found one pair of those on, on eBay. It was, I don't know what size, seven and a half or something, not my size. And um, if I had, if I ever find those in my size, I will buy them in a heartbeat. I don't care if they're $300, I will buy them. Those were the greatest boots I ever, I ever owned. I loved them. Um, they were on a chunky heel about this high, um, kind of a chunky sole, all stacked leather, um, beautiful, beautifully tanned leather. They were all sewn together. I mean, they were just really well made, beautiful things. And they were kind of loose around the ankle. They didn't, they didn't like follow the shape of your leg. They were like a, a stovepipe, I think they call it. So it was loose around the ankle and then went up around your calf, right? I've always had thick calves, so, you know, when I got up, zipping it up to my calf, I could kind of feel it was a little bit, you know, I couldn't have put blue jeans down inside those boots easily, let's put it that way. Um, but um, I loved those boots, they were wonderful. I felt badass in those boots. Um, so yeah, the, those were the those were the kinds of shoes that we wore. We also had those tatami sandals. They were like a, a bamboo footbed with a black or red um, velvet around the outside and then a velvet thong. Um, they were kind of just like oblong. They didn't like look foot shaped. They were just sort of like an oblong. And um, you'd buy them at an import, at import stores like Cost Plus. Everybody had a pair of those tatami sandals. Um, also, um, those um, sandals that were, I think you, they were called different things around the country. Go-aheads was one thing they were called. Um, and they were the, the, this is getting worse and worse. Um, anyway, so they would have like a rainbow sole and then nylon thongs. But you can still buy them. Um, they were knocked off by every company everywhere. So anyhow, that's what I wanted to talk about. The clothes, makeup, hair, shoes, jewelry, what I remember that always made me feel so beautiful. Um, yeah, the, the, I, I don't know. I felt like a princess and all of that stuff. So that's part of what I remember about 1975. I could yap on and on and on. Unfortunately, this mask has got to come off. I can feel that it's, I'm sitting right next to the sink in the hotel room. <laughs> so I'm gonna rinse this out. Um, I can feel it's beginning to tingle, not tingle, but feel weird. Um, it didn't dry. It just, it's wiping right off. So apparently that's not what it's supposed to do. It's not supposed to dry, I'm guessing. Anyway, um, mm, it comes off easily. Um, I'm going to rinse this out some more. Um, Leanne's still sleeping. Luckily I didn't. 
I'm not keeping her awake, which is a good thing. Um, it was so hard for her to drive here. Um, you know, we all hold our anxiety. We all hold our anxiety in a different place. With her, it has to do with leaving home, being away from home. It's very hard for her. For me, it's going into a restaurant. I mean, I had a hard time fitting behind a booth when I weighed 100 pounds less than I weigh now. You can only imagine how hard it is for me now. I, If I go into a restaurant and I see that there are no tables or there are no tables available, or I think my companions don't like get the fact that I'm not going to fit behind the booth, I completely freak out. So I don't go. I just don't go with people anymore. And I have my own um, restaurants that I know that where there'll be a table and I can sit with my back in the corner and I can see the whole restaurant. I can know how to get out. I can see who comes in and who goes out, that, that whole deal. Um, and so restaurants, restaurants really cause me a lot of anxiety. Okay, so this thing is off. Um, my face is nice and clean. I feel absolutely no different. Nothing. My skin doesn't feel tight. It doesn't feel particularly clean. It isn't tingling. It feels like I just like I just washed it with a wet rag. Nothing. So I don't know what this is supposed to do. Whatever it's supposed to do, it doesn't. That's all right. I mean, you know, sometimes things just don't turn out. You don't have something nice and redeeming you can say. And that's tonight's one of those nights. <laughs> so anyhow. Thanks for hanging with me through this really choppy video, and um, I'm going to go ahead and get this uploaded, and I will see you guys later. Oh, go see Cynthia's um, um, masking video. It will be linked below. Bye!